Welcome to this video that discusses one of the most fundamental processes we need to master, the nitrification process. In a previous movie we talked about the nitrogen cycle. You can find the link to that movie right below in the comments. The nitrification process, topic of the movie you are watching now, is an important part of this nitrogen cycle. Understanding and mastering the nitrification process prevents a lot of dead fish, and creating an optimal environment in your tank or pond will be a true present to your hobby. But let us first take a look where this nitrification process plays a role in the nitrogen cycle. The nitrogen cycle consists of five different stages. During the cycle, toxic waste for our fish is created, and nature has some trick up to her sleeve to conquer these. The nitrogen cycle itself is a permanent process that is available as long as ammonia is created. In the nitrogen cycle the creation of toxic ammonium, nitrite and nitrate are neutralized by a process called nitrification. Now let us focus on these three waste products. Ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate are the most important actors in one of the best plays of nature, the nitrification process. Before we go in depth of the chemistry that is occurring in our tanks and ponds, let me first introduce the actors of the play here. The first actor is ammonia. Ammonia is produced by the metabolism of amino acids and other compounds which contain nitrogen. It contains of three hydrogen atoms, bonded to one central nitrogen atom. However, in normal situations ammonia, NH3, is instantly ionized to ammonium, NH4, in tanks and ponds. This is good thing, as ammonia is much more dangerous and toxic to fish than ammonia. Ammonium consists of four hydrogen atoms, bounded to one nitrogen atom. Don't underestimate the lethal power of ammonium, it is better to get rid of it as soon as possible. The second actor of the play is nitrite. Nitrite is a toxic residue created in the nitrification process as well. It consists of one single nitrogen atom, bonded with two oxygen atoms. Nitrite can be a true killer for our fish, so now you know how mortality looks like if you could see it with your own eyes. The third actor of the play is nitrate. Nitrate plays the closing scene of the play. Nitrate consists of a single nitrogen atom, bonded with three organ atoms. Normally, every play has a happy end. When your biological filtration is working correctly, it is all good in this case as well. But bear in mind that there is a continuous flow of ammonia added by the fish, so stay vigilant and monitor your water values at a regular interval. This way you can appreciate the actors of the play more. Now that we know the actors of the play, we can look at the script, and the plot of the play. When we put the script together, and put the actors into play, we are looking at a plot that looks like this. The process consists of two steps, and we will now look into detail what the eye cannot see but is happening constantly in our tanks or ponds. We are now approaching some information that might boggle your mind, but we will try to be as clear as possible. Just remember the following, every element in this picture contains a single nitrogen atom, pictured in blue. As this nitrification process is part of the nitrogen cycle, this does not come as a surprise, does it? Initiated by chemical processes, the hydrogen atoms from the ammonium are magically substituted for oxygen atoms in different reactions. Let's take a look at these reactions, and what comes out of it. The first step is about transforming ammonium to nitrite. Ammonium and dissolved oxygen are transformed by bacteria to a single hydrogen atom, water, nitrate and energy. The energy is used by the bacteria for replication. Interesting process, isn't it? Take notice of the hydride that is produced, as it is an acid. This little product of the process can kill complete tanks and ponds. As it is an acid that is continuously created, your pH value will drop. This phenomenon is known as a pH crash, and is very dangerous. Luckily for us, the acid produced can be neutralized if there are enough carbonates and bicarbonates available to buffer it. The amount of it is represented by the KH value, a very important water value we should monitor at all times. We will come back to that in a later video. Also take notice of the fact that this chemical reaction is heavily relying on the presence of oxygen, it uses dissolved oxygen from your water. For this reason, constantly aerating your tank or pond is strongly recommended. The second step is about transforming nitrite to nitrate. Nitrite and dissolved oxygen are transformed by bacteria to a single nitrate atom and energy. The energy is again used by the bacteria for replication. This progress is relatively simple. 
Just remember that some dissolved oxygen is directly able to help neutralizing a dangerous waste like nitrite. In some cases, a special nitrification takes place called denitrification. We have seen that oxygen plays an important part in these chemical reactions, leading to a final product called nitrate. Nitrate can be removed by regular water refresh, but denitrification breaks down nitrate. Denitrification takes place in situations where freely available oxygen is depleted. These are called anoxic situations. Nitrate and hydrogen and available hydrocarbon transform to nitrogen gas and hydroxide. The nitrogen gas is released into the air, and the hydroxide bounds with free hydride ions we have seen in the transformation from nitrite to nitrate, leading to water, H2O. This process normally will not take place in the tank or pond itself. It relies on anoxic zones, but without a serious shortage of oxygen your fish will not survive. However, there are specific places in your system where anoxic zones certainly can exist. This is where your filtration system comes into the picture. Bacteria that are needed for the nitrification process are grouped into a natural glue that they create themselves. This is created from sugars, and is called the EPS layer. This can be found on all surfaces, and you can recognize it as a visible and slippery area. Although the EPS itself is fully transparent, during creation debris is caught that often colors the layer a bit brownish. You have to be very careful in presuming and nurturing these valuable layers of bacteria. Why did I mention this? Well, bacteria are stacked and the lower atoms are unable to reach free oxygen. This is the condition that is responsible for denitrification. In this video we have seen that the nitrification process is a very important part of the nitrogen cycle. Mastering this cycle, and the processes itself, is inevitable for keeping healthy fish. Although the biological processes might be overwhelming, some basic understanding is helpful in this. We have formulated a few takeaways for you that will help you in keeping your water healthy. Keep these in mind. One of the important takeaways is the understanding of the role of dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen is used in the chemical processes, and need to be available at all times. One of the ways to keep the use of oxygen low is to run a low number of inhabitants in your tank or pond. In overstocked tanks or ponds the effects of the nitrification process will be much more intense to the inhabitants. Just use your common sense, you will do fine. Thank you for your attention, we hope you have learned something. We are planning more videos on water quality and keeping fish in general, so please be so kind to subscribe to the channel and like the videos. This way you help me to keep the channel going, and bringing you more knowledge. Professor Pond thanks you for your attention, and keep enjoying your hobby. Professor Pond is an initiative, operated by Eric Vessels. If you want more of these great, informative and valuable movies, please like the movies, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.